see. Is that yours or mine? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's that. I think you can just say yes. For peace? Yeah. Okay. God, boy, I will. Okay. Good morning. Welcome to our city commission meeting. Uh, we're going to begin with a prayer from Pastor Tim Christo of the Catalyst Church. And he's also our chaplain for the police department, followed by the pledge led by General McQueen. Please rise. Thank you. I invite you to pray with me. Our Father God, you are the God of all wisdom. Uh, we seek your help today. As you say, you have put... Uh, every authority in its place, Lord, and too much responsibility is given, much is required. So come, Father, let your wisdom fall upon us, O Lord, as we gather for this meeting. Give us clarity so we can effectively tackle each part of today's agenda. Reveal problem areas and show us the best solutions that imply. Lord, encourage every heart in this room to seek the best for mankind and for this city. Let us not forget those in need, Father. I set our hearts and minds on issues like those in Buffalo. Now, Father, we pray and for comfort and peace yes, for the survivors and the victims of Buffalo, Lord. Um, and Lord, we pray for uh, those throughout the world. Well, Lord, let us focus on this city right now. Mm -hmm. We pray that you bless this meeting, Lord. We pray that you uh, set our minds on the things above. And we seek you and your wisdom. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Brandy, would you call the roll, please? Mayor Brudnicki. Here. Commissioner Ryder. Oh, where's my microphone? Here. <laughs> Commissioner Street. Here. Commissioner Halligas? Here. Commissioner Brown? Here. <clears throat> With the minutes from the May 10th meeting, I've had a chance to read those. Any additions or deletions of those, so say at this time, otherwise entertain uh, a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to present the minutes as accepted to approval from May 10th, 2022. Second a motion, Mayor. Call the roll. Commissioner Ryder? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes. Okay, uh, we have any additions or deletions uh, to the agenda? I know that our city attorney has one. Thank you. This is not, it's a, a an addition to item 10F. In 10F, it is consideration of approval to enter into contract negotiations with six selected engineering firms, three in Millville area, two, three in St. Andrews. We have done that, and we have the uh, contracts as far as the contract amounts on a sheet of paper. So the request is that we also approve the contracts after we approve the, uh, the uh, six engineering firms. So it's just in the motion, it will just be not only to approve entering into contracts, but to also approve <coughs> the contracts. Okay, so motion to add this item to 10F. I'd like to move approval of that, that we add that to the, to the agenda. Back on a motion, Mayor. Okay, discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes. Anything else, General? No, sir. All right. Can I get Melanie Law to come up here, please? Chief? Anyone else you'd like to come up?
Yeah. People you train. Like a little movie, you know. Andy Griffith or something. Captain Melanie Law, badge number 602, started her career with the Panama City Police Department on May 24, 2002. During her tenure with the department, Captain Law has worked in patrol services, traffic unit investigations, training and recruitment, and currently commands the information and logistics services section. Early in her career, Captain Law served as the lead child crimes detective and continued to be a relentless advocate for abused and neglected children throughout her career. She leads the department's crisis negotiation unit and successfully negotiated the safe surrender of several citizens suffering from mental distress who were contemplating self-harm. She has been awarded the Life Saving Award and numerous commendations over the past 20 years. It is with great honor and respect that we award Captain Melanie Law her 20-year service plaque from the city of Panama City. Wow. <laughs> Believe it or not, I worked with this lady for a long time at the bank before she came to the city. So we're showing our age. It is difficult to fully express the gratitude we have for the incredible dedication and loyalty that Sheila Ware has to the city of Panama City, where she has served for the past 25 years. Sheila first journeyed to the city in 1997 from People's First Bank, where she served as a CRA officer. While at People's First, she worked with a number of first-time home buyers and counseled many existing homeowners to prevent foreclosure. Although rewarding, she saw a better need and opportunity of reaching more households by working with the city's housing program, which led to her transfer in 1997. Sheila's flexibility and professional skills were put to the test as she continued to provide support to applicants of both renters and homeowners while adding and working with the other departments in the city, addressing other levels of effort, such as quality of life, economic development, safety and security, and infrastructure projects with the use of community developed block grant funding. That passion for learning and supporting the city's mission is as strong today as it was 25 years ago. In the last number of years, Sheila focused her attentions on achieving an increase on housing affordability and stability, elevating awareness and attentiveness to the impact of housing stability on a broad range of outcomes, including education, health, and employment. 
strengthening partnerships to improve program participants' housing stability, identifying and removing barriers to housing assistance and or pri pri prioritizing households experiencing or at risk of homelessness, aligning all housing affordability and homelessness efforts. Sheila completed one of her more interesting and challenging contributions, coordinating and preparing first-time home bar counseling classes, which she holds on a quarterly <coughs> basis. Here's where she helps potential first-time home buyers determining whether they are prepared and or equipped to own their first home and if they are willing to accept this huge responsibility. The scope and scale of these classes garnished Sheila, the respect and accolades of those that worked with her, as well as those participating, her approach to the task, and what she was able to accomplish solidified her reputation and stature with her coworkers and participants. Sheila is most valued long-term employee whose high standards, technological experience, excellence, and collegial empathy and mentoring has led and sustained the Community <coughs> Development Housing Program for years. Sometimes one can only begin to understand the importance of individuals by imagining how a department would function without them. We have thought about this with Sheila, and I can say with full honesty that it would not exist at all, much less at its current highly productive level. Thank you, Sheila, for 25 years of dedicated service to the city of Panama City. Tessie, come on up. Come on, bring your better half. church together. So. 40 years. All her life. <laughs> Tessie Goikachia began serving the citizens of Panama City on May 14, 2002 as a bookkeeper in the accounting department. She was promoted to payroll accounting clerk on January 26, 2006, where she learned all of the details of processing the city's payroll. On December 20th, 2016, Tessie was promoted to payroll coordinator, the position she faithfully serves in today. Tessie is an invaluable member of the city's accounting team. Her knowledge of the payroll and accounting processes and her years of experience are relied upon daily. She is dedicated to her job, employees of the city of Panama City, and to the city, Tessie is always willing to go the extra mile and do what is needed to accomplish the task at hand. Thank you, Tess, for these 20 years of dedicated service to the citizens of Panama City. Employees like you are treasured and valued. We honor you today with this 20-year plaque. Thank you.
couple of proclamations to read. Men's health. Regarding safe boating? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Wasn't that commercial? Safe boating is no accident. I used to say that all the time. My wife would be so mad. Over 100 million Americans continue to enjoy boating as a popular recreational activity. Panama City is blessed with many waterways to enjoy. Safe boating begins with preparation. The Coast Guard estimates estimates that human error accounts for most boating accidents and that life jackets could prevent nearly 86 percent of boating fatalities through basic boating safety procedures such as carrying life-saving emergency distress and communications equipment wearing life jackets attending safe boating courses participating in free boat safety checks and staying sober when navigating we can help ensure boaters on America's coastal, inland, and offshore waters stay safe throughout the season. The U.S. Coast Guard and its federal, state, and local safe boating partners encourage all boaters to explore and enjoy America's beautiful waters responsibly. National Safe Boating Week is observed to bring attention to important safe, life-saving tips for recreational boaters so they can have a safer, more fun experience out of the water throughout the, out on the water throughout the year. Now, therefore, I, Greg Bertnicki, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Panama City, do hereby proclaim May 21st through the 27th, 2022, as National Safe Boating Week throughout the city of Panama City. And I ask our citizens of Panama City to support the goals of the safe boating campaign with a year-round effort to promote safety on the waterways. I encourage all boaters to protect themselves and to set a good example for our youth by keeping safety first. Despite advances in medical technology and research, men continue to live an average of five years less than women, with Native American and African American men having the lowest life expectancy. Educating the public and healthcare workers about the importance of healthy lifestyle and early detection of male health problems will result in reducing rates of mortality from disease. Men who are educated about the value of their Preventative health care can play, that health care can play in prolonging their lifespan and their role as productive family members will be more likely to participate in health screenings. Fathers who stay connected to their children and maintain a healthy lifestyle are role models for their children and have happier, healthy children. Men's Health Network worked with Congress to develop a national <coughs> men's health awareness period as a special campaign to help educate men, boys, and their families about the importance of positive health attitudes and preventative health practices. The Men's Health Month website has been established at www.menshealthmonth.org and features resources, proclamations, and information about awareness events and activities, including Wear Blue Day. Men's Health Month will focus on a broad range of men's health issues, including heart disease, mental health, diabetes, and prostate, testicular, and colon cancer. 
the citizens of Panama City are encouraged to increase awareness of the importance of a healthy lifestyle, regular exercise, and medical checkups. Now, therefore, I, Greg Pernicki, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Panama City, do hereby proclaim June 2022 as Men's Health Month and encourage all our citizens to pursue preventative health practices and early detection efforts throughout the year. Very important. Yes, especially for us old geezers. <laughs> okay, next on the agenda, we have appointments to the Panama City Port Authority. And we had uh, several well-qualified individuals uh, that applied for this, uh, these two positions. And uh, I really wanna thank uh, Mr. Crisp, Mr. Hollingsworth, uh, Mr. Stamps, uh, Mr. Smith, Dr. Reese, and Michael Wynn for uh, really some very extensive resumes. And the uh, city appreciates you uh, offering your expertise. Uh, we only have two positions to fill. So uh, one of them, uh, the first one that I would like to bring up, uh, happens to be the chairman of the Port Authority. And uh, so uh, I, I want to know if we have a, a nomination for one particular for the first particular position. I would I would like to <clears throat> first of all say one thing. The the Port Authority is is an incredible part of our local economy. Uh, people I don't think people really realize how much uh, how much cargo comes through there, and I learned that over the years, and especially uh, lately, and uh, it. it it's so vital. I think we're the number one in the United States for copper. 50, isn't something like that? 58% of, of copper is the biggest thing in there. Pretty amazing. It's, it's amazing. And then how it's expanded to the, uh, to the east and, uh, and all the dredging projects and now with the Federal Express, you know, that property and 74 more acres waiting to be developed out off of 231 and we, the city has partnered with the port. So I just wanted to, I'm, I'm thankful for the port and Alex, Man, you're doing a great job as leading them. Uh, I commend you, brother, and everybody's on that board. So my motion was going to be right now to make uh, to make a motion that Harvey Hollingsworth uh, remain on the board. Uh, and I know we have to have unanimous consent, you know, uh, to do that. So, uh, but that's my motion uh, for this the first part of the. Here's board a second. Board. A second, a motion, Mayor. Any discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Rader. Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Okay, the second uh, position that we have opened, I hear a motion. I, I'd just like to say we've had some fantastic applicants. Um, I'd like to make a motion on Dr. Reese. And I'll second uh, that motion. Okay. Motion and second. Any discussion? Well. My only discussion is I just want to thank Don Crisp. What a wonderful man he's done. I know you may want to say something in a minute about that too. Uh, but we have to have unanimous consent, so okay. I understand where we are. Call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Uh, yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. And, and I do want to mention that the port has really expanded and come a long way in the last several years. Mm -hmm. And as Mr. Rader mentioned earlier about copper, uh, about the amount of product that we have that comes back and forth from our sister city, Merida. Yeah. And Mr. Crisp, I think, served on that board probably close to 20 years and yeah. did a phenomenal job. Fantastic. And uh, so, we appreciate the fact that he would donate his time for that long. And um, I'm certainly glad that we had so many people apply for that position and they were all, as I said earlier, well qualified. And we do have other things to do in the city. So you can uh, get with Brandy or Jan and if you'd like to apply for something else because the level of expertise that was there, we could certainly use in other areas of the city. 
But again, well uh, said. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Crisp. Wherever you are, uh, yeah. uh, we appreciate it. All of us do. Thank you. Yes. He's been a great leader, and he still is. Yes, still is. Okay, we've got uh, a couple of term expirations on the infrastructure surtax citizens committee. If you'd like to uh, apply to that, um, get with City Hall. And uh, we have a couple of term expirations on the Panama City Planning Board. So if you're interested in, in being involved with the Planning Board, then uh, please contact City Hall. And uh, same goes for, I think we have one position that's uh, coming open on the Panama City Housing Authority. So you can uh, contact City Hall if you are interested in that. Panama City Center for the Arts played host to the second annual Star Wars Day on May 4th. Hundreds of Jedi, both young and old, attended this year's event that included games, a scavenger hunt, and a Jedi training course. City of Panama City hosted its inaugural Cinco de Mayo Festival out at Oakland Terrace Park May 5th. This event included authentic Latin music, chips and salsa, and our first ever hot pepper eating contest. <laughs> yeah. The City of Panama City concluded its final youth tennis session of the spring season, May 19th at Oakland Terrace Park. This free camp ran Wednesday and Thursdays from April 6th to May 19th. It was open to all ages, 5 through 14. We've just got a few slots left for the second annual Kids Barbecue Cook-Off, May 28th, out at Red and White and Q Barbecue Festival. Red, white, and Q. Red, oh. white, and Q. Clever, I got it. <laughs> this year, children in two different age categories will compete for the most creative hot dog and best hamburger and side. To sign up, contact Panama City Quality of Life at AOL at PanamaCity.gov. Or QOL. Calling all teens, our next Teen Tuesday paint night takes place May 31st out at Frank Nelson Clubhouse. Join us on the last Tuesday of each month to create step-by-step -step canvases co-hosted by Palmetto <coughs> Paint PC. Admissions free. The fun begins at 6 p.m. Parents, you are encouraged to participate with your child. We're taking it back to nature this summer with sunrise and sunset yoga beginning June 29th. This year, the city of Panama City is teaming up with Florida Blue to connect mind, body, and soul in a relaxing green space. For more information about this nine-week <coughs> program, go to PanamaCity.gov. Dur during this year's Juneteenth celebration, Minority PC, the city of Springfield, and the city of Panama City invite you to join us for Movies in the Neighborhood. This year's family-friendly film festival takes place at three different locations, June 3rd, 10th, and 24th. For more information about this and other Juneteenth celebration events, visit our website at panamacity.gov. Start making your plans now to join us in historic downtown Panama City for our annual fireworks and family activities. Check our website at panamacity.gov for more event information. Okay, at this time, we'll have audience participation. Did anyone sign up for audience participation? <coughs> okay, we've got Mr. Thomas. Good morning. Uh, Derek Thomas, 1100 West 10th Street. Last time I came in here, I mentioned as an example the property across the street from my house and the height of the plants growing there. I was told by somebody at Code Enforcement that they had sent a letter to the person that owned that property. I had written a letter, I mean, I'd written a three-page long complaint to Code Enforcement that started with the sentence, I don't really care about the height of the plants across the street from my house. I look at them every single day. That doesn't matter to me. What matters is the height of the water. The, uh, if you look at the geographical map, there used to be a valley that ran down the middle of the block across the street. and 
it would end at the drain that's four feet below the height of the road. Now, if you look at the topographical map, you can click anywhere along the middle of the block, and it's 37 feet until you get to 56 feet away from the drain, at which point it jumps to 40 feet. And so there's no drainage. And uh, that's the problem to me. I don't really care about the height of the plants. Whoever heard what I said and w contacted code enforcement and, con and made code enforcement go there and, and talk to the owner, that wasn't on me. I said specifically to code enforcement, I don't really care about the height of the plants. Um, if you look at the damage after Hurricane Michael, uh, Mexico Beach, they had real damage because of the water. Water is very, very destructive. It's way more destructive than wind. And uh, if there's water that's moving through the neighborhoods and it gets obstructed by something and somebody builds something that obstructs the water, that has an effect on the other people in that community. And that's, I think, more important than what it something looks like. Uh, causes actual damage, people have to spend money. If you look at the uh, area right in between 14th and 15th Street, near uh, where the uh, old grocery outlet used to be, uh, there was a Marine Institute there, and there's four new houses that are about four feet higher than everything else, and there's no drains around that area. So the Marine Institute now is gonna have serious problems because of what somebody else decided to do on their property. The Marine Institute had nothing to do with that. They have no control over it. In my neighborhood next to Lake Caroline, if <coughs> 10 feet in from the road, there's two trees that are laying in what used to be a ditch. If you just clear out that area and pull those trees to the, re to the street and get rid of them, that would create a ditch equal to the ditch that was there before the hurricane. That's all I'm asking you to do. If, if it doesn't do any good, to talk to code enforcement about that, and there's nobody else that can do anything about it. I know you spend $20 million. I think that's a quick fix that would help alleviate problems in the neighborhood, and I would respectfully ask you to do something about that. Thank you. Ms. Clay? Good morning, everyone. Michelle Clay, 803 East 10th Street. Um, I just want to give a shout out. I know I gave the shout out on the Monday morning manager meeting, but a huge shout out to Quality of Life. They went above and beyond on this past Saturday at our first inaugural um, Discover Asia event. They were there the whole time providing support. It was a phenomenal event. Met so many new people who have been in Panama City for a while, so to see them come out was just, was awesome. Um, also a shout out to um, Assistant Manager Jared Jones for providing the update on the Glenwood Community Center. And, and that's what we want, to just see the growth and the movement in the whole Bay County. So thank you guys and look forward to more awesome events. Good. I gotta tell you, that Asia event was really interesting. It was really good. Come forward, right? Nah, he's Did you sign up or no? Okay. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> All right. Uh, from uh, being here from D.C. and seeing the event, thank you. And I'm always coming here and being grateful for the things that you're doing and supporting Gastra and supporting the community. I'm truly looking forward to uh, seeing some, some growth and more growth, especially in the Glenwood, Martin Luther King area. And uh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, I look forward to continue to come here and support this city, Gastra, and Ms. Clay as we move forward. Thank now, you. Now, can you give me your address to put on? The, I got to have it for the record. Uh, 1804 East 7th Court. I'm going to use my mom's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All Thanks. Right. Thank you, Mr. Clay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. One more. one more person, I think. Okay. Let's speak. I know you sign up. Is, is there a thing at the door when you walk in no. to sign up? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. I didn't have time to sign up, but okay. nevertheless. And to you all, thanks for a job well done. And I live on, my name is Henrietta Barnes, and I live on 617 Maple Avenue. And uh, we've been having some problem with speeders coming through there, and we have children at play. 
grandchildren at play and we just maybe want a, a speed sign. We have a speed sign saying 25 miles per hour, but look like they're just disregarding that and maybe something to show that children are at play will help us because I would hate to see a tragedy in my community with the kids running after balls and having fun on the outside. And, and I just wish that something could be done in the future that we'll be able to um, protect our children from danger. And you're 617 Maple? Maple Avenue. Maple, okay, sure. Seventh and Maple. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Next question. Bella? Thank you. Oops. Oh. Sure. Mayor, while he's coming forward, I want to make one quick announcement. And I meant to do this earlier. Yeah. I made a promise to someone. If anybody out there has children or grandchildren between the ages of 10 and 18, there's a free football camp coming up June 1 at Tom, June 24th, 25th at Tommy Oliver Stadium. If anybody's interested, it's free. And there'll be some NFL people there. If anybody, just let me know if you have any kids or neighborhood kids. It's a great thing. It's part of our city. Okay. Thank yes, sir. You. Good morning, Bob Stapleton, 542 South Bonita. I'm here to uh, just keep it in the forefront that I think that our, one of our greatest assets of this area, and most would agree, is the water that we have here and access to it. And I really appreciate that the city has seen fit to build a, <coughs> go forward with building the Snug Harbor Marina Launch. I mean, that'll be fantastic. 50-something parking places. Uh, but I would also encourage you to consider to keeping the boat launch at the city marina. While the infrastructure uh, improvement has been going on down there, you could have at the same time improved that boat launch. I've talked to marine engineers about it, and the possibility of improving that is doesn't require, by their assessment, redoing the whole boat launch. I mean, it's just washed out under the, uh, it's usable the way it is, but it's washed out under the, it needs to be extended slightly and it could be filled and, I mean, they have the capability to do that. Be a lot less than building a new boat launch. There are about 50 plus or minus a few uh, parking spots down there for boats and trailers. And then uh, there's also <coughs> additional parking because anybody that launches a boat might have uh, other occupants on the boat. There's parking for that too for single vehicles. So it's a fantastic facility that we have and it can be approved. Uh, as far as the cost of it, the Mexico Beach has a nice boat launch and they're doing huge improvements over there. Uh, to, that's their only access. Uh, so it's, in, it's incumbent upon them to do that. They've always charged a fee there. Uh, and you can buy uh, for $50 an annual pass or $10 per launch. Uh, I think we could justify doing that here if it would help. And I think obviously money helps, but to charge a fee if it were say $10, I don't think anybody would object to that very much. Of course they're gonna object to it, but they, if they considered it, uh, they, they wouldn't as opposed to closing boat launch it's four miles further from the Snug Harbor to the pass, if, and many boats would be going out of the pass, and eight miles out of the trip, two miles to the gallon, that's about $25 a trip spent to leave from Snug Harbor versus leaving from the downtown marina. So I think it could justify having a fee and an annual fee or a buy boat launch fee. Just something to consider. Uh, I wanna keep this in the forefront and hopefully keep a boat launch. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the first item is a first reading. No, yes, first reading. Item 7A, it's ordinance 3050A amending chapter seven related to sexually oriented businesses. The purpose of this ordinance is not to change the intent of the existing ordinance, but it further defines what change of ownership is. The background is that uh, sexually oriented businesses cannot be uh, located within, I think, a couple hundred feet of a tourism corridor. If there is a, they, but if they're already there, they, uh, at the time that that ordinance was adopted in the late 1990s, they're considered legally non-conforming. But if there is a change of ownership, 
they lose the legal non-conforming status and then must comply with the code and the code requires them to relocate off of the tourism corridor. <coughs> An issue has come up concerning just what that means, change of ownership. It's always been interpreted and applied that if ownership changes, what even if the name of the business doesn't change, that's a change of ownership. And so this would just simply clarify that more definitively and the request is to have the first reading. And the first reading is ordinance number 3058 and ordinance amending chapter seven, business licenses and business regulations. Article three, sexually oriented business, providing a clarification to change of ownership, providing a reasonable but certain winding down period with the, which extinguishes current non-conforming uses, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict, providing for codification, providing for severability, and providing an immediately effective date. Second item I have, item 7B, is execution of the Walgreens Subdivision Settlement Participation Form and Settlement Agreement and Release in the National Prescriptive Opiate litigation. These have been approved by you uh, previously. This is the latest settlement that the Attorney General's office had with uh, Walgreens and the request is for you to execute it. Any proceeds that are received directly by the city would be um, restricted to be used for abatement uh, uh, programs related to the opioid crisis. But the request is to approve this settlement. Your motion? Yes, I'd like to move up. Uh, approval of the settlement. Second, Second. a motion, ma'am. Discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunnicki? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Next item is to request your approval of the settlement memorandum that was entered into between FIMIT, as Florida Municipal Insurance Trust, representatives and uh, city representatives. Uh, the city manager was present. Well, Mark uh, Barber, who's special counsel for the city and me. So that's who signed the settlement uh, memorandum. The settlement memorandum is not binding until it's approved by this commission and we are requesting your approval. The, uh, this would, uh, once this is approved, then this means that the city will have received $73 million off of its, uh, from its insurance policy for damages related to Hurricane Michael. This approves the final settlement of $30 million to be paid within 30 days. These, uh, this payment is for work that hasn't been accomplished yet that's related to Hurricane Michael. I'd like to say that there was a lot of uh, effort that went into the settlement. It was a two-day mediation. Bill Perry's in our audience and he was there. Uh, he and Gerald Robinson to provide expert help throughout the mediation. Uh, Joy Masters, my partner, is here and she has been taking the lead with our firm related to the settlement uh, uh, claims over 250 over the last year and a half. Also, uh, Wendy Ellard and Mark Barber with Baker Donaldson uh, provided excellent assistance as far as special counsel for the city. And of course, Mark McQueen was sitting there uh, throughout the entire time. But I think it's, I recommend that the commission approve it. I'll move a motion to approve yeah, the absolutely. settlement. I'll second it. Any other discussion? Just thank you. Thank you so much. And, and I, I do, I guess I have to throw in one jab. Um, the amount of effort that it took to get paid is phenomenal. And uh, I'll bet they didn't have to beat down our door to get the premium every year. <laughs> so uh, thank you for what you did. And uh, I wish we could have been working on something else instead of having to fight with them. Call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes. Motion passes. I would five, like to clarify zero. something. When you, it, the 43 million, it says that they, they've already given us. I want to make sure people know that wasn't in cash. Right. That was them getting yeah. things, you know, roost done on our buildings <coughs> or things like that. So these are the insurance paid directly to a contractor 
on our behalf to do that. So I didn't want people thinking. Yes. We got 73 in value. Yes. Right. We got, they still owe us 30 in cash. Yes. The, the, the Thank 40, you for that. Yeah. Yes. The 43 million is a combination, a little yes. cash, a lot of uh, work lot of that doing. was done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, I draw your attention to item 8A, which is the final reading of Ordinance 3061.1, which is a voluntary annexation of 0 .507 acres of property located at 2503 West 33rd Street. As background information, the applicant has requested annexation to the city to utilize city services. The item was reviewed by the Planning Board on April 11th, 2022, and the Planning Board recommended approval unanimously. With that, it's my recommendation we move forward the final reading of an for annexation. This is a public hearing. Anyone like to address us on this issue? Seeing no one to hear a motion on 3061.1. Move approval, Mayor. Second a motion, Mayor. Discussion. <coughs> Call the roll. Commissioner Ryder? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Commission has adopted ordinance number 3061.1. <coughs> an ordinance of the city approving the voluntary annexation of 0 .507 acres of unincorporated property located at 2503 West 33rd Street, Bay County, Florida, into the city, as further defined here and after, amending the wards and boundaries of the city to include said lands and providing for an effective date. Item 8B is final reading of Ordinance 3061.2, amending the future land use map of the city to reflect a land use designation of residential for the property located at 2503 West 33rd Street. As background information, it's the same as I shared earlier in the annexation agenda request, and as such, it's a recommendation to conduct the final reading of the ordinance. Continuing the public hearing, your motion on 3061.2. <coughs> motion to approve, Mayor. I'll second. Discussion. Call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halgis? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Commission has adopted Ordinance 3061.2, <coughs> an ordinance amending the comprehensive plan future land use map of the city to reflect a land use designation of residential for a parcel of property located at 2503 West 33rd Street, Panama City, Florida, providing for a repealer, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Item 8C is a final reading of Ordinance 3061.3, amending the zoning map of the city to reflect a zoning designation of Residential 1, R1, for the property located at 2503 West 33rd Street. As background information, it's the same as I shared in the annexation agenda request, and the recommendation is to conduct the final reading of the ordinance. Still in the public hearing, and would like to address us. Your motion on 3061.3. I'll make a motion. I'll second the motion. Discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Ryder? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes, ma'am. Motion passes 5 0. Commission has adopted Ordinance 3061.3. An ordinance zoning a parcel of property located at 2503 West 33rd Street, Panama City, Florida, having approximately 0.507 acres, R1, providing for severability and effective date. Item 8D is the final reading of Ordinance 3062.1, amending the future land use map of the city to reflect a land use designation of general commercial for the property located at 2923 and 2925 Stanford Road. As background information, this item was reviewed by the Planning Board on April 11th, 2022, and the Planning Board recommended denial with a vote of 4 to 1. With that, it's a recommendation to conduct the final reading of the ordinance. This is a public hearing. Anyone would like to address us on this issue? Uh, my name is Scott Bowman, 2705 Woodmere Drive, Panama City. This is... Uh, a little history about how we got here. <clears throat> I bought a building, uh, two buildings, in fact, years ago. Um, immediately renovated uh, one of them and, and opened two separate businesses that I own uh, into them. Uh, one of the businesses we shuttered and I just expanded my other business into that building. Uh, during the course of doing that, after the storm, there was some uh, change in ordinances that doesn't allow me to um, use my building if I lease it. Um, even if I lease it to myself is what I found out. So the first time um, we 
tried to re lease it to another person, they came down and their, their uh, license request was uh, rejected. It was, that's, it's important that we know the, dis the difference between rejected and um, denied. Um, it was rejected, and uh, that started the process of us applying for uh, mixed use three. Came through the process and uh, was denied, so we were told to resubmit for general commercial. We did that, came back, it was also denied. So during the process of that second thing, uh, the city attorney, um, uh, Zimmerman explained in great length that we could do what we wanted to as a legal non-conforming use. So we applied to do that. <clears throat> Again, we were rejected, not denied, rejected. Rejected at the licensing desk. There's a process by which the, the application is approved and or denied. And then I've learned recently from um, Mr. Zimmerman at the last planning board meeting that there's an appeal process to a denial, not to a rejection. So there's a process by which I could have been denied and then appealed and explained my thing, but that was never allowed to happen. It's currently in the works right now, but it's been over a month. I still don't have, I don't have a rejection, but I don't have a denial either. Um, so there's a miscommunication, a, 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 a wrench in the works at the licensing d department, and no one's processing the applications to be formally denied so that I can formally appeal. Um, so that's where we're at right now, is I'm still asking for general commercial one so that I don't have to come visit you guys a bunch of times just to get some staff person to do their job. So I, I would like to, you know, the building was built as a commercial structure. I'd like to continue to use it that way. But the, the lease thing that you guys changed in February of 19 has really complicated the use of my building legally non conforming. Thank you. Anyone else? Bill South, 2915 Marin Drive. Um, nothing has changed since this first started. They made a few minor improvements on landscaping, but the citizens around there still do not want a commercial building in a commercial business in that area. We'd still like for it to go back to residential. To me, this just seems like a a uh, way to keep presenting until they wear you down and get you to go the way they want to go. I would like to request y'all to approve the planning board's denial of this application. Thank you very much. Good morning, Gene Simons, 2920 Marin Drive. Um, feel like I'm getting to know y'all very well. <laughs> We've been here many times, and uh, uh, I don't think anybody's changed their mind about this. Um, they did clean it up a little bit and looks some better, but there again, the traffic is crazy. Uh, 23rd. Street traffic to 390. Um, it's getting worse and worse, and uh, the cars are going faster and faster. We still got kids waiting on school buses, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I feel sorry for him. Uh, he's got a he's got an investment that is limited in use, but at the same time, it's our neighborhood, and uh, we'd like to keep it a neighborhood. Uh, I do recognize that there are other businesses on either end of Stanford Road, but not where we are. And uh, that is the major intersection for that entire part of our neighborhood. 
So I ask you to uh, honor what the planning board said and uh, to deny the request. And uh, I appreciate all your service very much. Thank you. Good morning, Delbert Summy, 2827 Jameson Drive. Uh, I would first like to thank the city attorney in coming to the planning board meeting because uh, I think that was very, very helpful. One of the things that I took out of that planning board meeting was the fact that this, as currently zoned, it's a variance. And one of the things that the city uh, attorney pointed out that that variance, okay, if changed, was intended to go back to the original use of the land as residential, the way it was originally zoned. That's what we would like to see if the variance is changed, okay? We would like to see it go back to residential, okay, to conform with the way the rest of the uh, local area is used. It is a safety issue for school children that are catching buses, okay, uh, with uh, increased traffic, okay, uh, the uh, use of the property behind and on either side is residential. It's, uh, it's only reasonable that that variance use go back to residential, and we would like to request that you do that as you have supported in the past. Please do that. Thank you very much. Linda Self, 2915 Marin Drive. Um, no need to repeat what's been said uh, over and over as we've come before you. I do want to point out that legally, I think if we look at the criteria set forth in the rules for a commercial building, namely stormwater, impervious surface area, setbacks, the building is non-compliant. I believe that we would be going against our own rule if we decided to grant a commercial zoning in this instance. I appreciate the board's consideration. I too ask for denial. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no, so this will be the last one. Thank you. Jennifer Bowman, 2705 Woodmere Drive. Um, at the first, at the last, um, county uh, city commission meeting um, we were told that if we by Mr. Zimmerman that if we were to that we could not rent it out to somebody else but if we rented it if we did it ourselves we opened a business ourselves that would we were able to do that I did try to do that um, I've tried to open something um, myself and I can't get through the process um, so that's why we've come back to the planning board because after talking to several of you, um, I was told, let's try again, see what we can do. You know, I've been told I'd be helped, but it's been a month. Um, I have not heard anything. Um, some of the repairs that we've done, we have redone the parking lot, we've done redone the stripes. Um, the residents had asked for the side road, 27th Street, to be blocked off. We have a heavy duty gate there where nobody can get through there, so the traffic is flowing onto. Stanford Road, not onto 27th, um, which I like because people don't park, cut through our parking lot anymore, which was something that I didn't like anyway. Um, I also want to point out that you can throw a football to the next commercial business closest to this, which is just down a couple of um, couple of uh, properties down from us on Stanford. And we're 1,065 feet away from the opening of the new Sweet Bay. So the traffic on Stamford Road, if they think it's bad because I'm, I want to open a boutique, clothing boutique, wait till that opens because that's going to become a highway. Um, there's a lot of people that come up and down Stamford Road to get to the new apartments that are now open up there to cut through to get to 390, um, which is fabulous, by the way. That super highway is fantastic. Um, you know, I just don't know that the 
the, they talk about safety, but um, have there been reports? Uh, we've never seen an accident in front of our building. Um, knock on wood, hope to God that never happens. Um, but we have taken huge steps in making this so they're not going flowing back into the neighborhood. They are state people are coming in and out, staying on Stanford. Um, that's all I have. I appreciate your consideration and the change. Thanks. Okay. So forget the change for a minute. Can you help us understand why we can't help them get their business license? Oh, I, I can. I mean, Do you like? I mean, that's not. I mean, it's. Relevant. I know that's not it's what relevant. We're on, but, I mean, it's not but that's what part of what the problem is. Is that. The community wants to keep it residential, which is understandable. And then, but they bought a business and we're saying, well, you can't, you know, now we're, you know, whatever. All that, fine. The reason that they're clearly saying they're back we here again to. is because of the business license issue, because we're not allowing yeah. them to open up the business. That's not what the Bowman said at the okay. planning commission meeting, because I specifically <laughs> asked the Bowman. Whoa, 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 whoa. I asked the Bowman's if you were to get your second business license, they already have one. And I said, if you were to get your second business license, does that mean you would not pursue uh, commercial zoning? And the answer was no, we still would like commercial zoning because we would like to sell our property uh, to for a commercial purpose and not lose the non-conforming status. I understand that. I believe that they will be denied <clears throat> ultimately, and we were in this hiatus between uh, planning officials because what they have asked for is to expand the non-conforming use. Once they've always had a business there, no one is trying to shut down their use of this property for a legally non-conforming business. That is not the issue. They have asked that there's only one business they have asked now to have two businesses. And under our code, that is an increase of an existing non-conforming use, which is not allowed. So when you, if you ever decrease it, you cannot grow it back. And so that will probably mean it will be denied. It's a little bit different than what, was, uh, what they had applied for a few months ago. They would have a remedy of appealing to the planning commission, um, and then the, if, uh, and then, but but that is not, it is relevant, but it's not relevant as far as the decision today. The decision today is whether or not this piece of property should be zoned commercial, uh, so that it can be sold in the future, and the Bowmans can use it now uh, for a commercial purpose without worrying about whether or not, without relying on their uh, uh, non-conforming grandfathered status, their legally non-conforming status. Nothing today is going to shut down the existing commercial use of this piece of property. It has been um, a legal non-conforming use for many, many years, and it will continue to be unless that use is decreased and then it can't expand again or the property is sold, and in 2019, the commission said, well, you know, the reason we have legal non-conforming provisions in our code is to allow individuals to have their investment protected. But because we have decided that this code, they're in a, in a zoning category that's not uh, normal, then once that property is sold though, or that property is destroyed, or that property is expanded, well, not ex then they will lose their legal non-conforming status, and then it has to be used consistent with the zoning that is here. This property is zoned residential. It can be used as a legal non-conforming commercial use and is continued to be. The use cannot be expanded. If the use decreases, there was once two businesses, now there's one. And I believe the decision will be you cannot go back to two. If the property is rented to a third party, then that is a transfer of interest in the real estate which would amount to losing their non-conforming status. That's why a rent, a, a lease to a third party creates um, 
uh, a, a transfer of interest, which would mean that the property loses its non-conforming status. Uh, so when this was all talked about, and the issue was, well, if the Bowmans received a second permit, which I don't believe, I mean, they can appeal that decision, does that mean that they would not pursue a commercial zoning? And the answer was, no. We would like this commission to consider approving a commercial zoning so we're not living under the restrictions of a non-conforming use. That is their right to pursue it. We don't have anything in our code right now that limits how many times somebody can ask for the same thing. Now, this is the second time for this particular zoning, and then it was mixed use another time. So, the, the, the re, we're, my opinion, we're not here because of the request for another business. Uh, I think we're here because of the original reasons, the desire, well, legitimate good, desire to have That's a good explanation commercial. because I wasn't understanding why they were having so much difficulty with the business license. So that, yeah. thank you. So, so, the, so the request before you is um, the Planning Commission, um, the proposed land use amendment, and I'm reading from the uh, summary of the staff, um, will not be consistent, the, the summary of findings. The proposed land use amendment zoning change will not be consistent with the future land use and rezoning, rezoning designation patterns in the area. The City of Panama City Commission voted to deny the request back in November. The Planning Commission voted to deny it. And so this, this uh, decision before you is whether or not it's your decision to make is consistent with the uh, uh, it qualifies for a change to a GC1. Do I hear a motion to <coughs> accept the planning board's uh, recommendation? Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'd like to make that motion. Yes, I would. Uh, I understand with all my heart where the Bowmans are coming from. I honestly do. But this, this, is, this is, our hands are tied. Legally, our hands are tied. So I've got a motion. That's my motion. Yes. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to second that motion. Okay, any other discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? No. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes. Motion to deny passes 4-1. Okay, if the motion fails, the next item, uh, <coughs> Mr. Uh, Mayor, is uh, zoning, and that is, that is moved yes, at this Excuse time me. because yes. the... Uh, Okay, with that, Mr. Mayor. Wrong? I'm no, sorry. No, you okay. still need to. I don't think. Okay, we don't it have to deny. do the, we don't have to do the zoning. So. Right. 8E, we do not consider. So moving on to item 8G, uh, which is the final reading of Ordinance 3063.2. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. is the final reading of ordinance 3063.1 amending the future land use map of the city to reflect a land use designation of urban residential for the property located at 4810 West Highway 98. As background information, this item was reviewed by the Planning Board on August 11, 2022, and the Planning Board recommended approval unanimously with the caveat that the applicant provide proof of mailing to the development services staff prior to the first city commission meeting. The city attorney's office has reviewed and is satisfied that proof of mailing information provided it was provided by the applicant. With that, it's the recommendation to conduct the final reading of the ordinance. It's a public hearing. Anyone like to address us on this issue? Your motion on 3063.1. So just as some background, I've had some conversations with neighbors over there, and there's some concern about what uh, potential may happen uh, with this specific property. So I'm going to motion to deny. I'll second Josh. We've got a motion to deny and, and a second. second. Call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes. Motion to deny passes 5 0. Once again, uh, 8 6 is moot because of the uh, denial of. You mean G? G. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, I, how did Hold I read on. a G? It's a 6. Yeah. It, thank you. <laughs> All right. 
So with that, uh, I move uh, to item 8H, uh, which is the final reading of Ordinance 3065.1, amending the future land use of, uh, map of the city to reflect the land use designation of urban residential for the property located at 331 State Avenue, 321 West 23rd Place, and 329 West 23rd Place. As background information, this item was reviewed by the Planning Board on August, April 11th, 2022, and the Planning Board recommended approval unanimously. With that as a recommendation, we conduct the final reading of the ordinance. Public hearing. Anyone like to address us on this issue? Your motion on 3065.1. Going once, going twice? Yeah. <coughs> I just thought Billy probably would. Yeah, we need a motion. Whose district is this in? I think it's, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why there's three addresses. It's, it's really just like a little neighborhood. It's three separate parcels. That three parcels that were originally done and then one building was placed in all three parcels. I mean, I'll make a motion. Oh, to this, approve. it's a very I'll strange a building. <laughs> it is, I, it's very strange. I'll Your make a second? motion. Yeah, I'll, I got I'll, a second I'll, motion. Motion's already been made. Okay. Discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brednicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. The commission has adopted ordinance number 3065.1, an ordinance amending the comprehensive plan future land use map of the city to reflect a <coughs> land use designation of urban residential for parcels of property located at 331 State Avenue, 321 West 23rd Place, 329 West 23rd Place, Panama City, Florida, providing for a repealer, severability, and effective date. Item 8I is the final reading of Ordinance 3065.2, amending the zoning map of the city to reflect the zoning designation of urban residential 2, UR2, for the property located at 331 State Avenue, 321 West 23rd Place, and 329 West 23rd Place. So background information is the same as I shared in the annexation correction the land use request and as such it's the recommendation to conduct the final reading of the ordinance. Continuing the public hearing, your motion on 3065.2. Yes, Mayor, I'll make the motion and, and just for the, so everybody can understand, uh, at 23rd and State Avenue, uh, there's a little shopping center there with a subway in there and, and uh, uh, recruiters. Yeah, there's a, yeah, the Army recruiters, yeah. Anyway, it's that 9,000 square foot house that overlooks everything. That's what that is. That's where that's at. Mm -hmm. And that was it says for sale. It's at for sale, right? 23rd. So that's the land we're talking about. So I move approval of that. I'm I'll going. second a motion, Mayor. Yeah. Discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brennan? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. The Commission has adopted Ordinance 3065.2 and Ordinance Zoning Parcels of Property Located at 331 State Avenue, 321 West 23rd Place, 329 West 23rd Place, Panama City, Florida, having approximately 1.239 acres, urban residential two, providing for severability and effective date. Okay, we've got two items on the consent agenda. One, two. Discuss those separately, otherwise entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented, 9A and B. A motion to approve. Second a motion, Mayor. Discussion. Call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brennan? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. General? So item 10A is the consideration to amend the fiscal year 2021-2022 budget to include funding provided by the American Rescue Plan, ARPA, to create the ARPA fund and to transfer previously budgeted amounts to the ARPA fund. As background information, the federal government provided the city approximately $10 million in funding as part of the American Rescue Plan Act. The first payment was $5,043,586.50 and was included in the Disaster Relief Fund budget. In preparation for receipt of the final payment, the ARPA funds are being transferred into a separate fund uh, in order to provide transparency as to the city's use of those funds. Uh, as such, the staff recommends approval to amend the fiscal year 2021-2022 budget for the ARPA fund receipts and to create the ARPA fund as well as to transfer the previously budgeted amounts to the ARPA fund. 
Motion on 10A. <coughs> I'll make a motion. I'll second. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halgis? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. The mission is adopted. Uh, resolution number 2022 0524.1, a resolution providing for the amendment of the approved fiscal year 21 22 budget for the accounting of American Rescue Plan funds. Item, <coughs> excuse me, item 10B is a consideration of resolution 2022 0524.2 and consideration of the city applying for the historic preservation special category grant for the St. Andrews School with a match requirement in the amount of $500,000. As background information, the City of Panama City will submit an application for the St. Andrews School in Resolution 2022-0524.2 to the uh, Florida Department of State Division of Historic Resources for a restoration grant that requires a matching funds. The City will submit an application by June 1st, 2022 for the Historic Preservation Special Category Funds with a total grant request of $1 million to repair the roof the fire suppression systems, the plumbing, the electrical, the doors, and finishes at St. Andrew's School. This requires a 50% match of $500,000. If the city is awarded the grant, the staff will bring the grant agreement forward and the accompanying budget resolution before the city commission uh, for your consideration and ultimate approval. With that, the recommendation is to uh, approve the resolution 2022-0524.2 uh, for the uh, $500,000 matching grant for the historic preservation. Motion on 10B. I'd like to make that motion. Motion. I'll second the motion. Discussion. Um, I'd just like to add, uh, there's been a lot of work that's been put into this. I, I just want to recognize uh, Ms. Nancy Hudson for the work that she's done in collecting letters from our fellow dignitaries and such to put stuff together. So I appreciate you, Nancy. And all the staff for being support of it. And so I certainly hope that we do get it because it will go a long way in actually getting the school open. Sure. So. Yeah, they're hard workers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love tough. it. Very grateful. Call roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brunicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Commission has adopted 20 resolution 2022-0524.2, a resolution of the city of Panama City, Florida, allocating matching <coughs> funds for a historic preservation special category grant for the restoration of St. Andrew's School. Item 10C is consideration to approve budget amendment resolution 2022-0524.3 to utilize state forfeiture funds to purchase equipment for the Panama City Police Department's training room in the amount of $5,662.86. As background information, the Panama City Police Department is seeking to transfer the needed amount from the state forfeiture funds to build a hyperwall, a wall of digital screens that can be unified and used as or used as separate displays to enhance the delivery of training materials. This technology is anticipated to also be used by our crime analyst and in the event of emergency will assist in the operations of the Panama City Police Department as the backup location for the Bay County Emergency Management. Uh, this expenditure is inclusive of all construction materials, IT equipment, uh, which will be required for the project. As such, it's a recommendation that we can uh, accept uh, the budget resolution 2022-0524.3 in the amount of $5,662.86. Motion on 10C. Move staff recommendation, yes. Second the motion, ma'am. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brudnicki? Yes, ma'am. Motion passes 5-0. Commission has adopted resolution 2022-0524.3, a resolution providing for the amendment of the approved fiscal year 21-22 budget to use state forfeiture funds to purchase equipment to build a wall of digital screens that can be unified or used as separate displays to enhance the delivery of training materials. Item 10D is the consideration of approval of budget amendment resolution 2022-0524.4 for task order PC22-013 for pump station 44 uh, SRF improvements in the amount of $238,686.90 to Mont McDonald. Uh, as background information, amendment one to the PC22-013 adds area 011 to the existing approved SRF task order, proposing replacement of and improvements to 
3,736 linear feet of existing sewer, water, and roadway for the demand-based uh, pump station number 44 rehabilitation. Amendment 1 adds $238,686.90 to the approved amount of $214,000 for a new task order total of $452,686.90. Uh, the uh, previous task order is attached to your packets, and with that, it's the recommendation that we move forward with uh, the approval of this budget resolution. Uh, motion on 10D. Motion to approve, Mayor. I second the motion. Discussion. Quicker the better. Get these done. <laughs> Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halgus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brodnicki? Yes, ma'am. Motion passes 5 0. Commission has approved Resolution 2022-0524.4, a resolution providing for the amendment of the approved fiscal year 21 22 budget to use the state revolving funds for area 011 improvements. Or 011. Okay. 011. Thank you. Uh, item 10E is the consideration of approval of change order number five for the pin stabilizer dredge project to Diamond Services Corporation in the amount of $7,500. As background information, the city entered into a grant award agreement with Triumph Gulf Coast and the Eastern Shipbuilding Group on August 1st, 2019. In accordance with the attached DRMP approval for this change order number five for Diamond Services Corporation, to provide the additional unforeseen work for the dredge spoil ponds. Uh, this is uh, fully reimbursable through Triumph, and as such, it's a recommendation we approve the change order to Diamond Services Corporation in the amount of $7,500. Motion on 10E. Move approval. Second the motion, Mayor. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halgus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brodnicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Commission has approved resolution 2022-0524.4, a resolution providing for the amendment of the approved fiscal year 21-22 budget to use the state revolving funds for area 011 improvements. Item 10F is, uh, was supplemented at the beginning of the uh, me meeting, which had a spreadsheet for the uh, six engineering firms that I'm about to share with you. Uh, with that, the consideration, item 10A, is the consideration of approval to enter into the contract negotiations for six selected engineering firms for phase one of the project restore for areas uh, in Millville and area A2, which is uh, in the Drummond Park area. Uh, as background information, the city advertised a request for qualification on April 6, 2022, and received six responses from qualified engineering firms on April 29, 2022. The Project Restore Millville and A2 Evaluation Panel met on Friday, May 13th, 2022 to determine the best engineering firms for this project. The panel discussed each RFQ proposal and after careful consideration all the firms, that, uh, of all the firms, the panel assigned each proposer with an area uh, subsection and it's delineated in the map that is uh, attached to your packets. Uh, with that, it's the recommendation uh, for us to not only enter into contract negotiations with all six engineering firms for the respective areas listed in the attached memo, but also to uh, approve the contracts uh, for them using the USDA design curve fee schedule. That uh, attachment that you have lists out the uh, estimated construction cost. It has the USDA engineering fee curve. That does not include the subcontractors that they hire, geotech work, surveyors, et cetera. It's the same curve that's used with the SRF funding, the engineering contracts. It's the same curve that will be used later this meeting when it comes to the 13 pump stations. And the contract itself will be identical except for name, scope of work, and the amount as the contracts that uh, are here in this package for the 13 list station project. So the recommendation is to not only select them, but to go ahead and award the contract in light of three weeks before our next meeting, and then they can and Mr. start Mayor, work. Yeah. And Mr. Mayor, <laughs> your motion on 10F? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, Josh Mr. Mayor, up. just uh, for clarification, for the Drummond Park, the, um, the three firms that will be assigned to the Drummond Park area are Corder Moeller, BDI, and Panhandle Engineering. Uh, the three firms that will be assigned to the Millville area will be Mott McDonald, Anchor CEI, and Barge. So, famous question always is, 
like what kind of time frame this, <laughs> these are major infrastructure oh, upgrades God, yeah, like yeah. major major in Millville <laughs> and Drummond Park area which are also called St. Andrews so. um, the, the, I think you said hopefully you know the engineering won't take longer than four to six that's months correct. and we can get Gosh. then we can go out to bid and then of course that's a couple months and then this and that but I just want I mean within a, within what probably eight to ten months we could oh, start correct. construction on this yes ma'am and so this three mm. weeks, saving us three weeks till the next meeting, it it's, sounds good it's to important. me. important. That's right. That and means each I'll move a motion to approve. I'll second. <laughs> Any other just, discussion? It can't be done soon Mark's enough. still talking. It just can't be done. I just done. got excited. Yes, <laughs> soon enough. Uh, just, just to remind the Season. commissioners and the citizens that uh, uh, each of these projects are approximately, each of these subject areas are approximately $20 million grant Funded. This is CDBGDR funded projects. Uh, we're very grateful to Governor DeSantis and uh, uh, DEO Director uh, Eagle uh, for their approvals of these funds uh, so that uh, we can actually make a difference in these, each of these two communities. I know. Whew. That's awesome. Come on up. <laughs> Uh, Walter P. Henry, 614 Maple Avenue. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, this is concerning the repair replacements of the sewer line, water lines in these areas, in lift station. Um, I just want to know, I, I hope that it will not cause residents too much problem. And I, I knew it needed to be done. No problem with that. Need to be done. But we need to we need to be able to get in our into our houses. Uh, Y'all go uh, sometimes somebody got to put it somewhere where we gonna be able to park. We don't have to go miles to get to our house. Now I have did this type of work. And I know it go it go block streets, and uh, folks not gonna be able to get probably get in their residence. And I know y'all used to go say the contractor said that he can leave one second of the street open. That's impossible. I can see it done during a water line, during a sewer line. If the sewer's in the middle of the street, that whole street is gone. It's gone. Uh, you know, I just, you know, I don't want to be just that downtown that y'all was told that y'all keep downtown open. They were at one section. I can see, you can look at it now and you see that did not happen. Yes, it did. No, it's still, the, the section of the road is closed. From when y'all started from the, from, the, from this old city hall coming up, that whole section was shut down. You could not drive through there. I'm saying driving through. Yeah, there's no through traffic. You cannot go through park. traffic. You, you can still get to it and park to it. it we did the best job that we sure. could do. I, I'm and not I can saying promise you, did, you that all the engineers are here, and we will make <laughs> it as user-friendly as possible to, for people to be able to get to their houses. But we do have to do the work. Correct. And I, and and I, I understand that, your, Mayor. You're, you're bringing that up. I, I understand that. I understand what you're saying. But, but we, have the, we have the right. I meant to know, but these folks that had business in there, they had to park for other places and walk in those streets. I'm just saying, don't say what you, that going to be done, and knowing that, I mean, they knew that when they did, when they offered the price, that they were not gonna be able to get, while they were traffic running down one side of the street, that's impossible. What's a problem with that? So I'm just, I'm just saying, and uh, I, I know sometimes we say things because we don't really we don't really know. I've done this. Thank you, Mr. Henry. I've been in it. So I know. I know Thank Mr. you, sir. I know Mr. Henry was not complaining about streetscapes, but I would like people to know that um, obviously your intentions are block to block, mm -hmm. but we had a really massive lead time on the lights right. and the trees and some of the other stuff. So instead of just sitting like, okay, well, we'll just wait till the trees come in. It's like, no, keep moving. So that was a, you know, executive decision to, keep, and I think it was the right decision. Um, it's a little bit of, a little bit of pain, but, but we're getting there. So yep. anyway. 
Agree. In, in those areas. Okay, that, do you hear uh, mo I'm sorry, Go ahead. Mr. Mayor. Uh, those areas that uh, Mr. Henry has spoken of, they have very narrow right of ways uh, because they're platted uh, back in the day and that uh, was a, a different consideration. It will be a difficult uh, process with regard to construction, but I believe it'll be a short term sacrifice for a long term gain. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, here, motion. Second. All right, call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brodnicki? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Item 10G is consideration of approval of Panhandle Engineering for the Part 2 Architectural and Engineering Services in the amount of $146,330 for the Hints Park FEMA project number 82385. His background information in the city is advertised for a request for qualifications July 14, 2021. Received three responsive bidders uh, from uh, qualified architectural firms on August 9, 2021. After careful consideration of the qualifications, Panhandle Engineering Incorporated was recommended as best qualified consultant and, and I, as your city manager, successfully negotiated an acceptable fee for their services for part one master planning. The fee was approved by the city commission and the master plans were developed and approved by the city. The Panhandle Engineering is now proposing the part two fee for the basic and supplemental services to design uh, the approved master plan. The services will include the development documents at 60%, construction documents at 90, and bid documents at 100%. Permitting, bid support, construction administration, and cost estimating services to the city of Panama City for the design of the Hints Park project. Uh, the scope and fees herein are based uh, on design of the concept master plans as developed by Panhandle Engineering and submitted and approved by the City Commission on January 20th, 2022. With that, it's a recommendation that we approve this contract with Panhandle Engineering for Part 2 Architectural and Engineering Services for Hence Park in the amount of $146,330. Motion on 10G. I'll make the motion. Second the motion, Mayor. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brodnicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. And can I ask one question, Mark? Does yes, this sir. include the stormwater pond design as well? It will be in baked into that. Okay. And then we'll be looking for grant funding separately <coughs> to support the uh, uh, construction of the stormwater part separate from the uh, funding that we're going to get from the state concerning the park itself. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, okay, item 10H is a consideration to approve the expenditure of budget funds to expand the police department's vehicle fleet for eight new vehicles in the amount of $93,531.96 for the current year and for the total amount of $467,659.80 over the five-year period. The Panama City Police Department is, has a continuing need to maintain an operational fleet of emergency response vehicles that aid in the timely and service and protection of the citizens of the city of Panama City. As performance of these vehicles can exact a heavy toll on the vehicle's use, the maintenance and repair of those uh, vehicles becomes cost prohibitive it, to ensure the police department can continue to provide the same standard of care for the citizens it serves. The purchase of the new vehicles on a rotating basis has become a necessity. It's part of our life cycle replacement strategy for these vehicles. With that, these vehicles are purchased with necessary equipment and lights by piggybacking off of the Charlotte County, Florida Purchasing Department's contract through five-year leases with a $1 buyout provided by Bancorp. Uh, this allows the department to appropriate uh, budgets over the funds for each of the successive years. And with that, it's the recommendation that we enter into this expenditure for the eight new vehicles for the Panama City Police Department. Motion on 10-H. Yes, sir. Move staff recommendation on this. Second the motion, Mayor. Discussion. Call the roll. Commissioner Ryder? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brendan? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Item 10 I is a consideration mm -hmm. of approval for the Oakland Cemetery National Historic Preservation yes. application. As background information, this is the preliminary application of the Florida Department of State Bureau of Historic Preservation to list the cemetery on the National Register of Historic Places. The site has been used as a cemetery for 127 years and several significant local people were buried, have been buried there to include uh, Mr. Uh, George West, Bell Booth McKenzie, and these two uh, were connected with the McKenzie House and the Panama City Publishing Company, which are also on the National Register. Adding the cemetery can uh, generate community interest in important sites and give credibility to the local efforts to preserve historic resources. With that, it's the recommendation that we approve the uh, Oakland Cemetery National Historic Preservation application 
that's before you. Your motion? I'll move a motion to accept. Second the motion. It's uh, 127 years old. I knew that West was buried there. I did not realize that Bell Booth McKenzie was mm -hmm. buried there as well. I mean, what a cool idea. Nancy, thank what, you again. Uh, the, uh, now I won't have to explain the origin of the Bell Booth Blonde <laughs> at the history class. <laughs> that was R.L. McKenzie's first wife who was died it? before uh, she had children. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Didn't know that. We have a motion. Do you see if we have a motion? Yeah, we're all good. Interesting. Call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brudnicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. I have a question. Is there an accurate plan on, on, on everything over there, you think? Pretty I, mean, accurate. I, I wouldn't know, but I mean. Pretty accurate. You would know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not 127. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty old. Okay, item 10J is uh, consideration to award contract to Diamond Landscape Management LLC for the delivery and installation of Tiff Tough Bermuda Sod to the Woods Field in the amount of $46,600. As background information, a request for proposals was advertised to the city by the city on March 18, 2022 for the delivery and installation of 65,000 square feet of Tiff Tough Bermuda Sod at Woods Field. The city received one proposal, which was evaluated by the city uh, staff selection committee. The contract would be for a one year in length with four 12 month optional renewals and for maintenance. With that in mind, it's a recommendation that we move forward uh, with the award of the contract to Diamond Landscape Management LLC uh, for the sod at Woodfield. Do they have this, a sprinkler is, this is a FEMA project. It is being installed as well. All right. Yep. Makes me feel better. Your <laughs> so motion? They do have a sprinkler motion system. To approve, Mayor. I'll second. Any other discussion? That's good grass. <laughs> yeah, your water. I, I would like to say poor Sean has been at this trying to get sod for a long time. So thank you. And <clears throat> he knows every all of these projects he's doing, he's putting irrigation in. Good. So there's not going to be a single blade of grass that's not going to have water to uh, it. irrigation. Yeah. Got to have Sweet. it. Sweet. Call the roll. Commissioner Rader. Sweet. Yes. Commissioner Street. Yes. Commissioner Halligan? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brednick? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Item 10K is consideration of purchasing a 2023 international 3.5 yard concrete truck for the amount of $142,098 from Rush Truck Center through source well contract number 060929-NVS. As background information, we have many concrete Concrete repairs needed throughout the city. Our concrete truck is over 15 years old and requires uh, frequent repairs. Without a dependable truck, we must rely on deliveries from supplier trucks that can take several weeks to schedule. In addition, there are fees for multiple stops that are frequently needed to have for smaller uh, repairs. Uh, the street maintenance crews need a reliable concrete truck to pour multiple jobs and continue to save on concrete delivery fees by maintaining the ability to pick up concrete from local suppliers and deliver to multiple sites around the city. Uh, the existing concrete truck will be sold as surplus. Uh, the, as recommendation is the approval for the purchase of uh, model 2023 MV 607 SBA international 3.5 yard diesel concrete truck from Rush Con Truck Center based on the statewide source well contract 060929-NVS for the amount of $142,098. Uh, Motion on 10K. Yeah, this Motion is important. I, I, it's very important. I move approval of it. Can't get here fast enough. Uh, again. And I second the motion, Mayor. So, Any other discussion? Yeah, Go I'm ahead. just kind of curious. Like, I mean, we all, I mean, we all, I mean, the sidewalks everywhere. Oh, God, it's, yes. It's just, uh, yeah, I mean, the entire city. So. Mm -hmm. How does this, like, what's realistic here? Okay, first yeah. of all, we gotta hire people to, to be able to get the operate. equipment, gotta hire, train. I mean, it's gonna be a full-time job. We don't need day. engineers to do sidewalks, do we? Oh, surely, I, you, I'm sorry. We don't need engineers to do sidewalks, do no, we? No, no, we no. Can just, just go. Just, just, just uh, new ones. Yeah, well, yeah, I know that, but yeah, the just repairs, repair, just get out so, there and get them done. These so are, this so is once we get the truck, then repair. we'll have to hire you know people, and that'll be a full-time job. Like, those people you hire is full-time, they'll be doing fixing, Pieces of sidewalks that's and all great. of that. Okay. That's good. Oh. Oh, thank you, Lord. Getting closer. Yes, that's awesome. Push them. Okay. Push them hard, General. <laughs> we, we've got great teammates, and I appreciate Clint. Uh, he 
Thank you, Jeff. Earlier, and Jonathan and his team. Call the roll. I'm, yeah, I'm, I made the motion. I'm sorry. Commissioner Rader. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Street. Yes. Commissioner Halligan. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Mayor Brednicki. Yes, ma'am. Motion passes 5 0. Item 10 L is the consideration of approval of Anchor CEI, Gordon Muller Engineering Incorporated, Black and VTAC Corporation for a continuing professional services contract for city projects which are funded by the state revolving funds, uh, which is under the con uh, Panama City 22-021. As background information, the city of Panama City through the city's purchasing division solicited qualified qualifications from experienced and qualified architects and engineers to provide continuing professional services for the city of Panama City for various state revolving fund projects. This was through solicitation PC 22-021. The scope was to seek professional services for continuing contracts which includes providing the city with the ability to solicit qualifications for future <coughs> state revolving fund projects uh, directly from the approved consultants list. Uh, the RFQ was issued pursuant to section 287.055 of the Florida statutes, which is the Consultants Competitive Negotiation Act, the CCNA, for continuing contracts. The department uh, recommendation is after four person selection panel from the Department of Public Works reviewed the qualifications of each of the firms and the staff recommends the approval for each of these engineering firms for the continuing professional service con services contract in support of the state revolving fund. Motion. Let's go. I'll make the motion. 10 L. Second the motion, man. Any other discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Rader? <laughs> yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligan? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brennicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Oh, city Manager, just I just wanted to make a distinction. These uh, contracts are not continuing in the sense that they're under that statute that you're limited to a $4 million criteria. Mm -hmm. These are selected for a particular project which is the entire SRF project, mm -hmm. which is divided up into multiple um, engineering contracts, and there'll be multiple construction contracts. But the project itself, all of the SRF work is what was advertised and what these engineers have been selected for. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. And so by contrast, we have the projects that are not supported right. by Correct. state revolving fund, yeah, which is what item 10M is all about. So the consideration to approve uh, approval of STV Incorporated and Black Vea Tech uh, Corporation for a continuing professional services contract for city projects not funded by the state revolving funds. Uh, as background information, the city, uh, through its purchasing department, uh, solicited uh, additional uh, engineering firms uh, through solicitation PC 22-020. The scope was to seek professional services for continuing contracts, which includes providing the city with the ability to solicit qualifications for future projects directly from approved consultants. The RFQ was issued pursuant to the section 287.055 for the Florida Statutes Consultants Competitive Negotiation Act for continuing contracts. Uh, each of these were evaluated and recommended by the Public Works Department for approval and as part of the list of certified and qualified professional engineers to support the continuing professional services contract. With that, it's a recommendation, recommendation we accept both of these firms. Motion on 10M. Motion to approve, Mayor. I'll second that motion. Any other discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Brednicki? Yes, ma'am. Motion passes 5-0. Item 10N is the consideration of the approval of the CCTV inspection and utility rehabilitation services contract with uh, the following firm, forms, excuse me, the following firms. Advanced Pace Technologies, Bearing Point Construction, Gulf Coast Underground, and Vortex Services. Uh, a request for a proposal was advertised by the city to review competitive bids for the city sewer and storm CCTV inspection and rehabilitation services. The scope is intended to be utilized by the city's state revolving fund projects as part of the utility inspection and rehabilitation of the existing wastewater and stormwater systems. Four proposals were received and evaluated by the city staff and is the recommendation that each of those four firms be accepted uh, as part of our ability to uh, utilize with the state revolving funds. Motion on 10N. Move approval. Second the motion, Mayor. Discussion. 
Call roll. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Mayor Bernicki? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. And last but not least, the long awaited uh, engineering projects for the uh, 13 lift stations. So, item 10 0 is the consideration and approval of nine engineering firms for phase one of the 13 lift station project, which is hazard mitigation grant program funded, uh, number 4399-079-R. As background information, the city advertised the request for qualifications on March 11, 2022, and received nine responses from qualified engineering firms on April 21st, 2022. The 13 lift stations evaluation panel met on Wednesday, May 11th, 2022, to determine the best qualified engineering firms, and the panel discussed each of the RFQ proposals, and after careful consideration of all the firms, the panel assigned each proposer to an area subsection, which is attached in your map of your uh, packets. After approval of the attached memo, the PMO provided all the engineering firms with the attached uh, form contracts. And as such, the recommendation is that we approve all nine engineering firms for the respective sections listed in the attached memo in the map that's in your packet and approve the unsigned engineering contracts with the authorization for the mayor to execute um, for approval for any non-substantial changes approved by the, me and the city manager, or city attorney. With that, it's, that's our recommendation. Your motion on 10-0. I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second. Amen. Any Perry. discussion? I Mr. Perry, it. keep it flowing downhill, brother. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I just never thought I'd be so excited about. I know. Wow. So, I just yeah, want to, a lot of engineering. <laughs> I just want to keep asking how long, how long, how long. You know. Okay. Call the roll. Commissioner Rader. Yes. Commissioner yes. Street. Yes. Commissioner Halligas. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Mayor yeah. Bernicki. Definitely. Motion Get her done. That's five zero. Right. Get her done. No, it was a lengthy meeting. We had a lot accomplished today. We're going to have CRA in a few minutes. Thank you so much for being here.